So our circadian rhythms, our circadian clock is this body's internal 24 hour biological pacemaker essentially. And this may accelerate the progression of colorectal cancer by affecting the gut microbiome and intestinal barrier function. So just know that your gut microbiome controls a lot more than just whether or not you're gonna get colorectal cancer. And if you're new here, I'm Dr. Gayla Gorman, a licensed acupuncturist, naturopath, and author of What's Your Kryptonite? On this channel, I'm here to help you reverse the effects of chronic stress so that you can cruise through midlife and beyond symptom-free, so that you can put an end to common midlife symptoms like chronic fatigue, insomnia, mood swings, issues with gut health, and even weight gain. I share information from research studies related to toxicity. You can think of it as a toxin trend. So this report was research from the University of California, Irvine, and it's revealed how much disruption it causes internally when your circadian clock or bio rhythms essentially are disrupted. So our circadian rhythms, our circadian clock is this body's internal 24 hour biological pacemaker essentially. And this may accelerate the progression of colorectal cancer is what they found by affecting the gut microbiome and intestinal barrier function. So just know that your gut microbiome controls a lot more than just whether or not you're gonna get colorectal cancer. In fact, the serotonin, which is one of the happy brain chemicals that really equates to us even feeling satisfaction in life, production starts in the gut. So gut health is extremely important. What are some signs that maybe you've got an issue with gut health? Well, we start by looking at maybe when you're waking up during the night. If you're not sleeping really soundly and you're waking up regularly between 1 and 3 a.m., this is a sign that your liver is somewhat toxic. And so there are a lot of things you can do to help support your liver and give it a break, essentially. It's trying to do a lot of cleanup work overnight. And when it's overwhelmed, maybe even still trying to process what you consumed later in the evening, it does not have the energy and resources essentially to do the repair work that it's supposed to be doing overnight. The other thing I will say is that pointing to what I just mentioned, there's a case for eating earlier in the day and making your last meal in the afternoon. This is referred to as early time restricted eating. So in oriental medicine, the period of time between one and three correlates to our small intestine and our small intestine is really what's doing most of the work and helping our body to basically turn what we're consuming into nutrients that are usable. And so between 1 and 3 p.m. is when we should be eating our largest meal. This is the best time to give your body its nutrients. The other thing I will say is that if you are feeling low energy, maybe even chronic fatigue, keep that eating window between 7 a.m. and 3 p.m. Again, this is more or less considered early time restricted eating. That is an eight hour eating window. And most of us can eat two, even three meals in that eight hour window and still feel satisfied. You may go to bed on a little bit of an empty stomach, but honestly, that's exactly what you want to do. That's going to free up a lot of energy for your liver. So if you're curious about this circadian clock and what the other two hour segments correlate with, well, the lung is for oriental medicine, that's where we start. That's the lung and that's between 3 and 5 a.m. The large intestine 
is between 5 and 7 a.m. and I will say that the absolute best time to have your main bowel movement of the day is between 5 and 7 a.m. So if you're one of those fortunate women who are waking up in the morning before 7 a.m. and really feel the urge to have a bowel movement, just know that that's a good sign that things are working pretty well internally. The next period of time is for the stomach, that's seven to nine. So if you're one of those people who really needs to eat something in the morning for breakfast, maybe you have a job and it really dictates what your availability is for meals, then eating earlier in the morning between seven and nine, your body is definitely still gonna do a pretty good job of handling that. Our spleen, which is essentially the pancreas, is correlated to between 9 and 11, and this is when our body is best designed to handle more carb-heavy meals. So if you really want to eat something that is more carb-heavy, best to do it in your morning meal. This does not give you a license to eat donuts, <laughs> but if you like oatmeal or something like that, then eating it in the morning, your body supports this, the digestive system supports this. Next, our heart is from 11 to 1, and our small intestine is from 1 to 3. And then there are a couple of organs, three to five and five to seven, that is kidney and bladder. And then a couple of more organs that are really more or less just unique to oriental medicine. And that is the pericardium and what's known as the Sanjiao or triple warmer. And then the gallbladder is from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. And the liver is from 1 a.m a.m. to 3 a.m. So that takes us all the way through the 24 hour circadian clock. And just know that if you're having issues repeatedly during a certain window of time, that can be a sign that you've got some issue related to that system. So remember, these are not necessarily organs. These are systems in our body and oriental medicine. Each one of these represents a whole system internally. And so as we're trying to get to the root cause of what's really going on and what's creating symptoms for us, we're looking at all these different signs and clues and biomarkers so that we can unravel the mystery and really address the root cause, reverse the chronic disease and the underlying stress that's causing it. And if your best efforts to live a healthy lifestyle and do all the things you think are supposed to work aren't getting the job done, you may even be feeling like you take two steps forward and three back. In my next video, I'll show you how to manage the toxic stress that's sabotaging your efforts. You can eliminate the symptoms that seem to be piling up in midlife naturally without medication, crazy diets, intense exercise, or any other unsustainable lifestyle hack.